productive trip and I think the whole time all of us were kind of joking like yo should we just make a video next year like a team video next year and, and then like I don't know I guess that was for me like the first thought or like idea in my head of maybe there being a video and then, yeah I think a big part of it was like Tanner kind of rallying like this like the filmers because mm -hmm. I think having like Hayden the first year and Harry like getting Harry on board and Jake Price the next year like there's definitely a lot of like filmers shooting film all that and like just getting that type of like those filmers together we definitely like all right like they'd already made like the stuff that we love to watch mm -hmm. yeah like with encore and 9191 and everything that tanner has made is making a team movie like how is the approach to making a team movie different than some of the projects you've worked on in the past i mean in individually it was really different just because like it was maybe the first time i was like really committed like full winter into one project so that was really different for me and i was like really excited to yeah to come into this winter like doing this and but yeah you just maybe feel more of like the yeah the team vibe and like the family vibe that I really like. The fact that like we all had a certain level of commitment to the project, like because it's a brand um, project, it felt like good to know that you weren't like out there just like with your friends and then all of a sudden you're kind of confused as to like how committed you are to it. It's like it felt good because the people that you were like on trips with and surrounding yourself with were all like, I don't know, kind of inspiring each other. Yeah. To like, to do like the best we could and to make the project as good as we could. And it's more than just like putting a sticker on your board or something, you know? It's like you feel actually like a part of the brand, you know? Like, team video and we're all going on these trips together and not just like filming around video parts yeah, necessarily. Just kind of touching on what you're saying because it's like, it's really sick to be on a trip and like, whoever it is gets a trip and you're like, dude, it's an epic day. Like, someone like did something incredible today and like I was there to witness it or yeah. like maybe help out a little you know like this. there's like more ownership yeah exactly to it. it's not maybe. just like oh I'm trying to film this video part just for me or whatever it's like yeah, exactly. we all want to like make this video as right. good as it can be yeah. experience the trips and like the moments all together rather than just like mm -hmm. just to be there to like get a trick Big part of this movie, of course, is you know Tanner and all the filmers wanted to use a lot of 16 millimeter film. Had you guys filmed 16 before? Definitely not. I don't think so. I think I've done Super 8, but never 16. Yeah. Which is like a cool thing to do. Yeah, I did because I'm older than them. <laughs> <laughs> You have let's try, you don't know what you're filming or you don't have like an instant, uh, you know, playback or I, actually we do now with the iPhones, we like all film each other and we can like tell each other if it's what we wanted to get or not, but yeah, it's 
really different and I think mostly it's different for uh, the filmers and uh, what I saw this winter is just Jack being so excited all winter about like filming anything just because of his camera and, yeah. and the film so that was pretty cool. I think because I was new to it I was I don't know how I felt about it because a lot of times like Tanner would be like okay we're gonna film this angle which is like the angle I like the most on 60 so I'm like in back of my head I'm like well that shot might come out might not come out just because that's a film camera like that's how it is yeah whenever we're like even cruising like both of us would always be like should we just tell him to like go digital <laughs> we didn't want to like hurt his feelings so like, <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of hard to get used to but then once I started seeing actual clips come out on like the timeline of like the 60s yeah. stuff they would get yeah. I was like this is like the coolest thing ever it looks crazy it looks so like like real and real you guys saw like the turnaround process of the film in real time like was it really really quick i don't really know how film works because I, I haven't used it a lot uh i think it was usually like a couple weeks or something that's pretty and, quick yeah, yeah. yeah. these guys it's quick because they're just like yeah you know they're filming it and they're like i, I need to see what this looks like so yeah. they send it out immediately yeah. and expedite everything like that <laughs> as somebody who's <laughs> never filmed it before did you know that it's you know, every foot of film costs money to buy, develop, um, transfer. Yeah, I do remember like the guys talking about it and everything. But um, like, <laughs> <laughs> like they, they, had, they, had, they had they had the like budget for it, so it didn't really like I didn't really yeah. think twice about it. Like it's all worth it because the film just looks so timeless. Yeah, and, and like, the positive sides of it is yeah. there's like so much like nitty gritty, nitpicky stuff going on like in the filming process. It's like, you know, I'm guilty of it myself. Like, <clears> oh, you know, like my arm or like, you know, something like this. Yeah, weird. you critique every little yeah, thing. Yeah, but no like, what. you know, that was like another thing that I was trying to do differently this year. Was just like, take them as they come. Like, you land a trick, you land a trick. If it like, felt, if it felt good, then that's what you run with. And then with the 16, it's like, when you land a trick and it felt good, that's it. You know, just yeah. walk away. It's like, yeah. all right, cool. You don't have to watch it, and maybe you have to like, someone's like, yeah, well, you could do it a little better. You know, it's like you can't watch it. So. And then like a couple weeks later, when the footage comes back, like you almost forget about some of the stuff that like happened. And then Tanner or whoever it is is like, yo, like let's watch this roll, and everyone's like, oh, like yeah, like let's yeah. check this out. Like a lot of the challenges about film, the fact that it can mess up, or that like it can look so different than what you intended it to look for. Um, was is kind of the magic for like the writer or the filmer or whoever's editing when they yeah. get it back like you don't know what you have and that's just like the best part about it you guys all spent a long time filming this movie but you also got to go to some amazing places i imagine what were some of the peak experiences that you're going to take away from the filming of the team movie here i think for me it would be Japan was like my all-time favorite place to snowboard just because there was one day where the, we were like two crews, one powder crew and then one um, rail crew and then there was one day it was like this big like snowfall the night before so we all met up at the resort and went snowboarding and that was probably the first real time I actually got to ride like <laughs> like powder, so dude, I so, saw footage I, from I, that I, I was trying to look like cool. I, I brought out like the like <laughs> dragon tail hat and like the like directional board. And I, was, <laughs> I was like trying to like look cool, but that was like probably like my highlight. It was just like oh, something yeah. so new for me, and everyone was having like the greatest time. Everyone was together, like all we weren't even like filming, so it was just like any stress we had or any like anything that was like it wasn't serious at all it was just we went and rode the resort that day all together for fun like filming yeah. with the iphone and everything and it was like it was just fun i'm in the exact same boat as dylan like mm -hmm. we were on the same trip together um we were like the rail side of things and then simultaneously blake jake dan aiden and sam so i think collectively we had like 15 people, I want to say, at the yeah, resort that day. Just yeah. ripped the resort Between, the like, whole day. The two crews, yeah. the guides, the filmers, and we had like 15 people. Um, and that was probably the first time I rode like legitimate powder too, anything more than like eight inches. So <laughs> it was like a completely different. It was like, were they holding you back? Were you giving them pointers? No, it was so like we were 
we were just going nuts because everything was so soft that you could just, it was like, basically you, it was mandatory to flip. Like we'd come to something and someone would hit it and like try like a rippy flip or something and then everyone would get hyped and everyone, and then we'd start hiking it and then we'd start filming with our <laughs> iPhones and then we'd like, <laughs> single person is like hooting and hollering like yeah. at every given moment you're like you're ecstatic laughing. like it was insane yeah. Arthur what about you what was your one of your most memorable I haven't been on this street in Japan um, but yeah we we got stuck in Canada uh, everything I filmed for the, <laughs> for the movie was in Canada you guys were there for and, a long time yeah for three months uh, straight but wow. that was great like, I never really experienced it, like, the full program of like, you know, slide on the track and just like... <laughs> the Jake Price project. <laughs> I heard you bought a sled before you even came over to the States, Yeah. landed, picked it up, and just disappeared. That was as easy as this, yeah. Just like, uh, Jake was in the backcountry, so he couldn't like, really reach me, but he just uh, shoot me a text, and he said, yeah, call this guy and get a sled, and, and I, couldn't reach, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't reach him anymore, so I was like, all right, I'm just gonna call the, the guy and try to get a sled, and I bought one just by, on the phone. And by the time I arrived in Canada, it was just like the sled arrived at Revelstoke at the same time as I did. And I think the next day we were just riding. So that was the first day of, the, of you know, Canada and me. And then it, it's been like this all winter. It's fun. We had a lot of big moments on sleds, especially him because he had a brand new sled. And then like the ski dudes were like 850s now. And you had the barge, like the 63 track. Yeah. And you had you had like just enough sled experience to be like good, but not like like not skilled. That's just right. like just <laughs> like yeah. Just lucky and talented, not like skilled. So he, like he knew how to work the throttle, but like didn't know how to steer. So he he was like sending it, killing it so hard, but also like almost dying. Super loose. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like, yeah like, I mean, it's so many weird. funny. Days. Yeah, we just we were stoked to just finish the season, and like there was no accident and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we spent like. I don't know, we thought maybe around like 50 days on those machines just like trying hard, you know, and getting stuck and having like really long days and like getting close to trees and like it, it's pretty, you know, it takes a while to, to get it. Oh and, yeah. Uh, Sledding besides basically Pat and Jake. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we we're all decent now, but yeah, loose times. <laughs> <laughs>